I'm from a big, large family. My father had 18 kids uh, and three wives. Uh, we all grew up in a very strong family, Muslim. And even still now, my father go to Mecca at least once every three months. Uh. So at age four, we start uh, going to Madrasa. And by age 14, we all memorize the whole Quran. And uh, pretty much praying five times a day did the Ramadan, the Laid al kabir everything a Muslim should do, we did it in our house. Uh, and pretty much we was very happy because the only thing we know was about Allah. And we follow Allah, like we know even like it is black and white for us, or just everything was about Allah. And we had the really, we don't know who is Allah, but uh, we just follow what the Imam told us to do, especially when you memorize the Quran. And uh, after finishing the Quran, my father gave everybody like a graduation present uh, and was to go to Mecca. And uh, it took us like three months to get prepared to go to Mecca. And uh, truly when you get at the airport in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, you are really happy because you are about to see the Holy Land. Go and see where the Prophet Muhammad lay and all the sites you have to visit uh, and to just found out you are part of the elect Muslim because Islam has uh, five pillars to confess, uh, to pray, to do the Ramadan, and to give to the poor, the charities and if you can, to go to Mecca at least once in your lifetime yes. if you can financial because it costs a lot of money to go to Mecca and you need to be very physical good to go to Mecca so it's not everybody can do that so to find out you can go to Mecca for 21 days to the Holy Land. It is really emotional and touching. And uh, when you come back home, you feel really you are different than any other Muslim because you accomplish the, the Hajj. So really, you immerse in the society to learn more about Islam and try to understand about Islam. It is September 11. After September, the event of September 11, I was watching TV with my roommate, uh, and we all was uh, devout Muslim. And I was very touched. And some like uh, what happened in September 11, and to find out was some people call themselves a Muslim. So I really start to think about why this is happening. I really was a battle to find out was first the Muslim who did this thing. People who called themselves Muslim who did these things. Huh? And uh, I really was, uh, I went back to the Quran and really read the Quran. If it's really the Quran, kill to, to really teach to kill the unbeliever. And really I found out uh, we have a lot of chapter in the Quran, chapter four, five, nine. Say kill unbeliever wherever you found them. So I really started thinking about this book. Why a book gonna say, especially to killing the innocent. Why we have to do that? What in the, what religion? Especially since everybody say God love everybody. Why kill? That is the best way to witness people. And this is, I just uh, went and just starting to think, to pray, because I really don't understand those chapters. And there's no way we can take off those chapters in the Quran, because they are in the Quran. There in the Quran, it is there, there. So I just went and prayed, starting really to think a lot about Islam. God sent a strong Christian man in my life, we become good friends, and start talking about politics. Islam first before Christianity, and then we came to Christianity. And really, when we come to Christianity, he witnessed me about Christ, about Christ huh? but I need more than that. I decided what. Since he know the the Bible, I know the Quran. Can we agree just to check the evidence, like as an intellectual way, check the evidence of what we have in the Quran and what we have in the Bible? And truly, after checking the evidence of the four gospel, the people who wrote the four gospel, checking the evidence of Christ and checking the evidence of Muhammad and the Quran, it is day and night. We have like thousands of evidences when it comes to Christianity and the Quran 
you don't have no evidence. And to understand, to get to the point to understand, the first book after Christ has been wrote just less than 20 years after his death. And Muhammad, 250 years after his death, that is really start to cliche in my ear. And then I just immerse myself in checking the evidence from the whole Bible, and from the whole Quran, and how the Bible makes more sense than the Quran. That is really pushed me to understand, okay, you know what, I live in the 21st century. And since I just took the example, when we go to the courthouse, the judge wants the facts and the evidence before they believe for everything. So I saw myself, you not know, before I believe in something, I need to have fact and evidence. And since I never been exposed when I was young about Christianity, because I grew up in a very devout Muslim family, it is just about Islam. But now I'm exposed for everything. And I check by myself, I check by myself the evidence. But I lost the case because what I found out in the Bible, the whole Bible has only one title the redemption and the whole Bible talk about the life of Christ it is 60 it is 66 books but all them about Christ wrote by almost 40 different people but everything about Christ and the other turning point before Christ or Muhammad came in this world even the pagan know something about God they have it's just a feeling or thinking about God but we had someone who came in this world and say he's God and he did what people predict thousand years and he was raised from death. So I believe this guy is God. I don't need to be first grader. I don't need to be in university to just decide who's real. And it is only in the Bible I found out God loves his enemy. He loves, he hates sin, but he loves everybody. And he wants everybody to repent in this world. But the Quran states God do not love his enemy and the most important thing in this life is to love each other and I found out this in life of Christ when the two become very clear for me Christ is God it was around midnight Easter Eve I just went out in my out of my apartment and look at the sky saw all those stars saw the beauty of this life I say tonight, I decide tomorrow morning, I will go to church after the service, give my life to Christ. I was so happy because I'm free and I know if I die, I don't have no doubt. I know where I'm, have, where I'm going. I have the insurance. And this is thing I didn't get in Islam. I don't know where I will go. I just have to walk, to walk, to walk. And I don't know where to stop. And I don't know what I need to do. But coming to Christ is nothing I had to do. It is a free and I know where I will go. So I was so happy. I wasn't convert. I don't believe in conversion. I was saved. So I was just just imagine the joy to be saved, to be free. My relationship with God, it is a personal relationship. I don't have to pass anymore by the Imam or by someone to talk to God. I can just talk to God wherever I am. And I know what God wants me to do. I didn't do nothing to deserve my salvation. The salvation is free. But I have my, my Bible. Everything He wants me to do, it is there. It is the clear, clear crystal. I know I have personal relationship with God. I can talk to Him through prayer. And He asked me to love everybody. So being saved, I just, it was clear for me, everybody are equal in this life and you have to love everybody. And the only purpose I have in this life is to witness people about Christ. The rest of my life I decide to make sure the Muslim, people who don't know Christ, know Christ before they die. Because that's become the most important thing for me. I love everybody and I want everybody to be safe before they die. So I commit my life for the rest of my life. This is going to be my mission. It's just to go wherever I can go in this world to witness about Christ. I would love to tell all my Muslim friends, thanks God 
Today, we don't have to go to anyone to check the evidence about Christ, about Islam. Just open up our heart and our mind to be thinking mind and to check the evidences. And Christ loves everybody because we need to understand if we have just to walk, to walk, like Islam say, on the day of judgment, God, since everybody has two angels, and the angel, one is a report your good deed and one your bad deed, what is good enough for God? We don't know what is good enough for God. So, do we want to be sure where we're going to go, or are we still going to be walking toward where we don't go? And I pray for you guys every day. And Christ loves you. He came down here to die for us. And the salvation is free. And please open up the door to your Christian friend. Talk to them. I don't ask you. Nobody can convert you from Islam to Christianity. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. But can you just give people a chance? Open the missionary. Open the door to those missionaries. There are people who love you. Talk to them. Because Christ loves you and Christ sends those people to your doors. You never know. Maybe God is going to talk to you through those people.